Hello, all, and welcome to this. Um, we're actually doing this uh, live from um, KubeCon here in London, and Andy is back east um, in the United States, and he's Andy Goldstein is our principal software engineer, and he's been working on OpenShift for a number of years. So I'm going to let him um, introduce the subject of services, linkings, and catalogs. Um, we've got a number of folks here um, sitting with me from Protobon, so I will let them talk through my microphone when the Q&A session starts. Um, what we're going to try and do here today is let Andy take the first 20 minutes or so to present um, the state of services, linkings, and catalogs, and how to get involved in it, um, and how to help um, where the Trello cards are, where the stuff is in GitHub, and all of that. And then we'll have Q&A via the chat room. Um, and if you just type it into chat, we'll read back the question. And if you happen to be in the room with me here, um, you can actually talk live. So I'm going to mute myself for now and let Andy take it away. So thanks, Andy, for joining us today. All right, thank you, Diane. Uh, so my name is Andy Goldstein. I am a principal software engineer with Red Hat. I'm the team lead for our cluster infrastructure team, which focuses on Kubernetes. So uh, within OpenShift, our, a big part of the foundation is Kubernetes. So today's talk will be covering services, linking, and catalogs as they relate to both Kubernetes and OpenShift. So here's what I'm going to talk about today. Services, linking, and catalogs. So for starters, um, if you're deploying something into Kubernetes or OpenShift, whether it's a series of microservices or uh, a large Java application, for example, those things are going to be deployed using pods. And a pod is just a collection of containers. And pods come and go. So you probably need some way to consistently reference um, a database or a web service or a memory cache that your microservices or your application need to talk to. So that brings us to services. What is a service? It is an abstraction that allows us to uh, not have to worry about pods that are transient. And it instead gives us a consistent way to, um, to reference your database or your cache or whatever you're trying to talk to. So a service inside of Kubernetes and OpenShift is something that sits in front of pods via a label selector. And I'll have an example where you can see uh, some labels and how the service is able to select which pods it is going to communicate with. The service has a static IP address, which is extremely useful for consistent um, communications. Additionally, we have DNS integration, if you have that enabled in Kubernetes, and it's also out of the box with OpenShift. So uh, rather than having to remember an IP address, you can use DNS to communicate with your services. And uh, the service acts as a load balancer in front of um, the pods that it is um, it's sitting in front of, and uh, requests that go to that service are delivered uh, most of the time round robin uh, among the pods that sit behind it. There are There is another use for services within the cluster as well. You can use a service that, instead of talking to pods or sitting in front of pods, is used to provide a link to an external or off-cluster destination. So an example would be, let's say your IT department has an existing Oracle database or an existing web service that has been around since before you deployed OpenShift, and you want to be able to reference that service in the same manner that you would use if you were referencing uh, a series of pods that are uh, fronted by a service. And so in this case, as a user or an administrator, you would manually manage the endpoints that that service is uh, is sitting in front of instead of having a label selector that takes care of that for you automatically. So here's an example service. Uh, I have a service here. It lives in the namespace Andy. It has a name of DB uh, because it's a database service. And then I have a selector that is going to match on two labels. The first one is DB name, and it wants to find pods with a DB name value of Postgres. And the second one is for the environment, and we're looking for a production um, 
pod. And in addition to specifying a selector, you specify at least one port. And this makes sure that the service is listening on port 5432, and it is targeting port 5432 inside of the containers uh, or inside of the pods that it's, it's sitting in front of. So here's a, a graphical representation of what that might look like. You'd have your DB service that uh, gets a cluster IP address. I picked one at random here, 10.0.0.15. And uh, you'll see three pods. Two of them, pods one and two, have matching uh, DB names and environment labels for Postgres and prod. And you can see each pod has a unique IP address. The third pod has a different value for the environment label. So in this particular example, the DB service is going to communicate with pods one and two, but not pod three. And to the right of the DB service, I have listed what the DNS entry would look like by default for this particular service. It's the name of the service, DB, followed by the name of the uh, namespace or project, which in my example is Andy, and then .svc.cluster.local. So how can you talk to a service? There's two ways you can do it. I just mentioned DNS, and there's one other mechanism, which is environment variables. And uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift will automatically uh, create environment variables for you that allow you to, uh, to look up the host and the port of your service. And these environment variables are automatically created and automatically injected into your pods when they are created and started. Now, there is an ordering issue. You do have to make sure that your service exists before the pod is created. Otherwise, the, you won't have these environment variables accessible in the pod. And that's why DNS uh, has an advantage because DNS is going to work anytime, regardless of if you create the service first or if you create the pod first. So how do we find services? Uh, you can definitely run OC get services or kube control get services, and this will list all the services in a single project. Not super easy to make this work across projects. Uh, you can have it list uh, services in every project, but that's going to give you everything, and it's going to be hard to uh, to filter out the weeds. It's not a curated list. It's just literally every single service that you have access to will show up when you run that command across projects. And similarly, where it's not a, a curated list, if, if I did want to, to expose one of my services so that other users could find it, uh, effectively if I wanted to publish it, there's no command for doing that right now, which is why I have some question marks after OC there. Uh, you could grant users read-only access to a project, um, but even then, the default policy um, for the viewer role, I don't believe, gives you access to uh, to things like secrets if you needed them to to uh, to communicate with a service for credentials. And and doing this granting is it's pretty broad. If I give somebody read-only access to my project, they get to see pretty much everything in there, and I would probably much prefer it to be more restrictive, where I could explicitly say, I have an etcd service that I want to share with other people, but I have a Postgres service that I want to keep to myself uh, within my project. So what's missing in services? Um, they only have the IP and the port or ports specified for communicating with them. And there's no way to easily associate any sort of configuration details or credentials that you would need to use when communicating with a service. And uh, case in point is username, password, that sort of thing. Um, you, you don't have any environment variables or files or anything that represent those credentials unless you take the uh, appropriate steps to get those into your pods uh, via secrets or however you plan to do it, but there's no way to associate that with a service right now. So one thing that we're proposing is being able to link configuration details and secrets to a service. And um, the proposed command that we have is oc link. And so I have two examples here where I'm saying 
I would like to link a DB cred secret to my DB service, and I would like to link a DB config map to my DB service. And what this will do is add a new annotation that contains a list of the, um, the referenced items. And this is just a proposal for right now. It's, um, it's a lot easier to prototype with annotations than it is to modify the API. And maybe one day, assuming this is accepted, we would get this uh, to evolve to an actual field on the service itself. So here's an example secret and config map uh, item. You've got uh, the DB cred secret with the username and password, and you've got the uh, DB config map with some arbitrary data in there. I just happened to pick color of green. What does it look like after I run OC link? Uh, you'll see that this is my service. Uh, it's the same Andy namespace and DB name, but I've got some new annotations now. So after I run OC link, you would see these kubernetes.io slash references annotations. And by itself, this doesn't, doesn't really do much, but what we can do is service linking. So I mentioned before that environment variables are automatically injected for all of the services that exist at the time that the pod is created. And that's something that um, we are probably going to deprecate so that you have to be more explicit in which services a given pod depends on. And so what we'd like to do with service linking is provide the ability to link configuration, credentials, and services to basically anything that has a pod or a pod template. So pods, replication controllers, deployment configs and OpenShift, deployments from Kubernetes, jobs, daemon sets, and anything else that might come along um, as we grow. So let's take an example deployment config. Um, this one's pretty basic. I've stripped out some items that aren't relevant to this example, but I have a deployment config called front end. It has um, two replicas. I have a selector defined, and I have a single container um, that's running the Andy slash front end image, whatever that happens to be, and it exposes one port on 8080. So what would it look like to do linking? Here I'd like to reuse the proposed link command, and the example is OC link service slash DB, DC slash front end, and this would link the service and any references. So that would be the config map and secret that I had in the example, I'd like to bring those along with me so that when the service is linked to the deployment config, we get that information automatically added without having to do any extra work. And this linking could happen as environment variables or volumes and files. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate just environment variables in this example. So here's what the deployment config would look like after we run the linking with um, some of the other irrelevant pieces removed, you'll see that there's a new ENV section under my container. And I've got five environment variables here. I've got db underscore host and db underscore port, which come from the service. And then I've got the db underscore username and password, which come from the secret, and db underscore color, which comes from the config map. And so all of this just happens as a result of running OC link. And now when the deployment config is uh, deployed and we have an actual pod or set of pods that come from it, the code running in those pods can make use of these environment variables uh, just because it's a convention that we're attempting to establish. So there's still a lot of things left to be done when it comes to thinking about uh, service linking. One big one is we'd like to, to find a way to do linking inside of templates. So a template inside of OpenShift and hopefully eventually Kubernetes is a list of items, which could include things like services, image streams, build configs, deployment configs, individual pods, et cetera. Uh, and right now, there's no easy way to define a service in a template and define a, a pod or a deployment config in the same template and have a way to designate that the service should be linked to the pod. And so that, that's one item where we could use some help. Uh, another one is finalizing the environment variable and volume conventions and just what the, the user experience looks like around that. A couple more outstanding questions are, should we do the server side? Should we do it client side? If we do it client side, it is fairly easy to get the moving parts going, but it means that every client would have to implement the same or similar logic. 
versus if we do it on the server, then it's implemented in one place and all the clients can take advantage of it. And then finally, unlinking, is something like that needed? And if so, what does it actually mean? Do we remove the environment variables in the files or, or what? Uh, so definitely some items still to figure out there. Which moves, or I'm gonna move on to service catalogs now. So what we're proposing is a curated list of services, and you can have one or more catalogs inside your cluster. Users or administrators would be able to pick which services they want to publish to a catalog. The catalogs would be able to display services across multiple namespaces or projects. And so this solves the problem I'd, I highlighted before, where if you run OC get services and you only see either services in your namespace or services across multiple namespaces, um, this solves that problem. And the fact that users are publishing them means it is a curated list. We wanna provide the ability to list um, and search. And then finally, uh, what good would a catalog be if we couldn't actually consume the services in that catalog? So what are we proposing for publishing a service to a catalog? Um, OC create catalog entry, give it a name, in this case, AndyDB. I'm saying that I want the entry to reference the uh, SVC slash DB service from my namespace. I want to put it in the default catalog, and I'm going to give it a description of Andy's DB service. And this will create a catalog entry for that service. And here's a sample of what that might look like. So you can see that the, um, the name is filled in as Andy DB, the catalog is default, it's got my description, and then I have a reference field in here that references what namespace the service lives in what kind of resource it is, in this case a service, and the name of that particular resource, which is DB. And similarly, if I wanted to take a look at what service catalogs existed, I could run OC get service catalogs. And in this example, you can see default finance and IT. And then if I wanted to see what individual entries existed in a given catalog, I could run OC get service catalog entries default, and then I would see AndyDB, which was the one that we just looked at. And then I've got some other examples here for say Redis, Memcached, and etcd. So how do you use a catalog entry? Well, uh, because the uh, services or whatever is in the catalog can come from multiple namespaces and you may not have access to, uh, to get those resources from a given namespace, we're doing something similar to persistent volume claims where we're having a service claim. And the service claim is a resource that you would create that indicates your desire to use an entry from the catalog, but it doesn't exactly give you um, the immediate ability to just reach into someone else's project and, and get access to their data. So here's my example, OC create service claim, my DB being the name, and then I specify that I want it to come from the default catalog, and I'd like to use the Andy DB entry. So what happens when you create a claim? We will have some code running in a controller that processes the claim. And the first thing that would happen is that claim would be evaluated to determine if it should be admitted or rejected. And that could go a few different ways. It could be an automated decision where you've got a policy uh, of some sort that determines who's allowed to um, who's allowed to create claims, who's allowed to consume uh, catalog entry items from particular catalogs, or it could be custom. It could go through some sort of workflow process where you need to have some manual intervention where uh, a manager needs to approve a claim, for example. And finally, once a claim is admitted, it will be fulfilled in whatever manner is necessary based on the type of the entry that's in the catalog. So here's an example. Um, let's say I've got my catalog entry that we were looking at before for AndyDB. And on the left, I've got an Andy project that has the three resources that we've been discussing today so far, the DB service, the DB cred secret, and the DB config map. And John here wants to create a service claim to use this particular entry from the catalog. And so John creates that service claim. And once it is admitted, the controller would go and create 
something that looks just like what's in Andy's project. You'll have a MyDB service, a DB cred secret, and a DB config map. And these items represent basically copies of the data that is in uh, Andy's project at, a, at that point in time. And the, the service itself would most likely be configured to point to Andy's service. So if you, if you attempted to connect to the MyDB service, it would um, just redirect or potentially be a CNAME over to the Andy service or to the uh, DB service in the Andy project. So I mentioned that there's different types of catalog entries um, or entry references. One of them could be service, and that's the example that we just looked at where you would, or the controller, would copy the service and any associated configuration and secrets. Uh, it'll copy that information into new resources in the destination project. So that's where uh, John's project got new resources with the data copied from Andy's project. Uh, another type of reference could be a template. So this would be a way to publish a template. So let's say that I have a template that um, creates an etcd cluster, for example. And uh, as I mentioned before, if I don't want to necessarily give every user access to all of my templates, I could pick this etcd template, publish it to the catalog, and then they would be able to uh, create a claim against that template and the system would provision that template for them in their project. And then another type that we're considering is um, a service broker type. And this is similar to uh, what other uh, cloud vendors provide where you can basically inject a set of um, catalog entries into the catalog and then all of the provisioning and linking and unlinking and deprovisioning is handled by an external service uh, broker. So there are still a lot of to-dos and this is where we are really looking for community help and community input. Um, I'm going to be starting some design and prototyping and would definitely appreciate any help if anyone's interested in providing some assistance. We are looking for feedback on the user experience. So all of the examples that I presented in this presentation so far are not set in stone. Um, so we want to make sure that we get the best user experience, both from the command line perspective and from the, the web console perspective, which I didn't even uh, haven't even discussed yet. So um, any feedback on user experience would be extremely helpful. Uh, feedback on the service broker API, we need help defining that so that we can make sure that that has a good user experience. Uh, other things we need to figure out are TLS support. So for example, if you've got a, an external service for, or, or even an internal one, uh, and, I, and I create a claim and I get a, a new service for my project, if I try to make a TLS connection to that service, it's probably going to have the wrong host name. Uh, so there'll be a mismatch because I'm trying to talk to my service in my project when it's really um, a, the certificate is valid for a different project. So we need to figure that out. Uh, security is a big one, figuring out who's allowed to publish to a catalog, who's allowed to consume various items uh, or entries is something that uh, we definitely need help with. Uh, Multi-tenant networking, if that is enabled, then just um, creating a C name, for example, from my new service to the original service is not going to work because most likely the, the um, the network won't allow those connections to go through. So we need to figure out how to, to poke those holes appropriately. And then finally, uh, just keeping data in sync. If I have a config map or a secret and I go ahead and do a claim against that and then the original data changes, say the password changes, um, I'm not gonna be made aware of that unless we figure out some way to, to handle that. So. These are a series of to-dos. I'm sure there's probably a lot more, and we definitely will appreciate any community help we can get. So in closing, uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. And um, the first link I have on the page here is the Trello card that we have for the uh, proposal that exists upstream in the Kubernetes repository. The second link is to our OpenShift origin code base, and the third link is to Kubernetes. And I want to thank everybody again uh, for listening, and I will 
turn it over to questions at this point. All right, thank you, Andy. Um, there's one question right off the bat from Rich Carpenter um, around the security stuff. And he says, in the example of the DB service claim, would the project claim making the claim need to get their own credentials? Seems it may be a security risk to have any other projects making the claim have access to the same credentials as the creator of the service. Right, so um, we definitely appreciate that. And what we are thinking is that um, there will probably be multiple phases, and um, for starters, we most likely would just have the credential credentials be shared, but uh, we are definitely interested, uh, whether it's with template provisioning or the service broker model or another one that we've yet to come up with, uh, we do want to, to provide the ability to generate per whether it's it's per pod or per project or what the appropriate scope is we want to be able to generate uh, unique credentials so that not everybody is sharing the same single set and since uh, i'm wondering um andy if you could pull up the trello card that you mentioned and just show that on the screen because maybe not everybody is aware of our um our process from the community point of view of how to comment on trello cards Sure, give me just a second to pull that up here. Oh, yes. Uh, hi, Andy. This is Christian, Christian Roldan from Road One. So uh, I would like to know when when would be available the um, uh, service broker support? Uh, what was the question? When will we have service broker support? Yes. Uh, I don't have an ETA on that at this point. Um, we need to define the API, and then um, I, there are still several moving pieces to figure out. Um, for starters, there is no code for any of this right now. It's all theoretical. So um, I am planning to start prototyping um, very soon, and um, like I said, we will definitely appreciate any input and collaboration on any part of this, including the service broker. Sure. Hello, Andy. This is Julian Fernandez from, from ISVAN. Uh, I want to know, uh, it's a question about security. How can you manage <clears throat> your own service in a public service catalog? Uh, for example, if I want to change something in something in a secret or in a config data, uh, how can I change that and reference in every everyone who is claiming that service? Right. So that was one of the um, the bullets I had on my uh, next to last slide with the items that we have to still figure out. Um, so keeping all of that data in sync, uh, we don't have a a path forward yet or a solution yet, but it is definitely an item that um, we are aware of and we will be working to uh, to address. Okay, and another question. Within your proposal, I miss uh, some information about the security policies uh, of, a, of one service in a service catalog. Uh, for example, uh, if I upload, upload my service to a service for example, the default service catalog, uh, everyone can change, uh, can update that service? Oh, no, I suppose that not. So maybe we, we need some security config to, uh, we need to add, add some security config to that service. Yes, I definitely agree. Um, I If you're looking at the screen now, I have the, proposal that I've submitted to Kubernetes and highlighted is security uh, and figuring out what to do there. Uh, I, I, I agree 100% with what you said. And um, I, I think what's probably going to happen is there will be an initial round of prototyping just to make sure that uh, what's in the proposal is feasible. And uh, that probably won't include security to start off with, but uh, we obviously, uh, wouldn't want to really ship anything without security uh, built in. So um, I will be planning to 
have discussions with um, with other members of our teams who specialize in security, especially around um, access control in Kubernetes and OpenShift, and uh, it is something we need to solve. Okay, thank you. All right, let me just check and see. It looks like there's a couple other questions popping into the chat. Um, let's see. From Lee Calcott, um, he's curious as to whether there is a vision for a federated service catalog wherein services are shared across the OpenShift deployments. Um, so I guess I need some clarification on that. Is that a question about if you have multiple OpenShift clusters, would you, are you asking for a way to have entries in one catalog in one cluster be made available to another cluster? Uh, he is saying yes. Okay. Um, that wasn't something that I had been thinking about, but um, if that's something that you are interested in, um, I would definitely appreciate some more details on that use case. Let's see if he pipes in with a little bit more. Um, my and, and that certainly can be um, submitted as feedback to the Trello card that I have on the screen right now. Um, it could be submitted as feedback to the proposal that's inside um, that the Trello card links to. Uh, so e either of those would be a valid way to um, to get that feedback to us. Sure. And then he's now saying. Sure, he's built the Cisco intercloud service catalog and he'll he'll do his worst to help you out. So, All right, thanks, thanks Lee. <laughs> All right. Um, there's another question from Mike. Uh, can there be a service or a similar object that is referenced by other projects instead of copied? So you could create an object as a DB, dev DB connection or a prod DB pub, and publish it and other projects could reference it in their project. Uh, and it's a very long-winded one, so I'm going to keep going. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm reading it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to find Mike and take him off mute. Let's see. Yeah. Mike, if you unmute yourself, you can talk and add some context to that question. So I think that that question, Mike, probably needs a little bit more context of what you're trying to accomplished. I, I can, I can understand, I understand the question. Um, so I don't have an answer right now. I, I, I think the goal here is just to avoid having lots and lots of copies of services in individual namespaces that all point back to an original service so that, uh, if the credentials change or the config changes, you don't have to, um, to refresh that sort of thing. Um, I think that's, I, I like that. Um, we just need to figure out uh, if you do have the multi-tenant networking plugin enabled, um, a way to be able to um, to poke those holes appropriately, and also uh, from the the um, if you're writing an application or a microservice and you're deploying it to a project, um, you obviously can can talk to whatever your firewall allows you to talk to, but it's certainly easy to say, I just want to go to the service or DNS name called DB and don't have any, it's not a fully qualified name. And because of the way that DNS resolution works in the containers, DB would be resolved to DB dot whatever your project is dot service dot cluster dot local, um, which obviously would require that you have a local service, but you can also uh, reference services by DNS name that don't belong to your project. And the only issue or potential issue there would be if the multi-tenant networking plugin doesn't allow you to make that cross project hop. Um, so it's definitely something that's worth thinking about. Um, but I, I will say that uh, you are not going to be allowed to get access to secrets in another namespace or another project. So, um, we you probably are still going to need to have a have to have a copy of that in your project locally. Righty then. 
I'm not seeing any other questions in the chat, looking around the room. Um, so Andy, from your perspective, what's the best way, um, you, you mentioned Trello before, of adding in use cases and comments on Trello. Is that really the best way for people to contribute at this juncture? Um, that is certainly a, a good way to do it. Um, I, I like that just because it's it's not um, an email that's just sent to me that potentially gets missed. Um, and it allows all the members of the community to see what people are interested in and, and collaborate on it. Okay. Right. So then, either the Trello card or the, uh, the Kubernetes pull request would work for me. Perfect. So if you could throw that last slide up again, just so we'll sure. end on having those those links there for everybody to share. Give me just a second. And I, I think I saw on that um, Trello page that this was a proposal that was in the works for 3.3. That... Yeah, so um, we are hoping to get something in for 3.3. And we are trying to figure out, uh, in addition to doing the prototyping, we're trying to figure out where this code is ultimately going to live. Um, we would like to have it be something that users could run on Kubernetes as well as OpenShift. Um, but it uh, it's probably not, the service catalog portion of it is probably not something that would be considered a core Kubernetes feature addition. And whereas linking, I think, is probably uh, has a better chance of getting into the core project. So we just need to figure out the best way to deploy this and get it integrated into the cluster, whether that's Kubernetes or OpenShift. And that's going to be part of the, the prototyping that's going on. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to do this presentation today. I think it's um, opened a lot of eyes. There's also uh, uh, an awful lot of interest in getting this work done sooner than later. So I'm sure you'll get some comments back on that Trello card and a few volunteers to help you in your prototyping efforts. And um, once we've got a prototype up, I'd love to have you back to show it off um, on the uh, as, as another commons briefing in the not too distant future. That's Definitely, nice. I'd be happy to do that. All right. Let's see, there may have been one more question that pops in. No, oh, I think that's what we've got. Um, so thanks very much for coming today, and please um, reach out if you have more questions and join us um, on our weekly community meetups. There are Thursdays from 10 to 11 on the IRC channel for OpenShift-Dev. So um, that's, that'll be tomorrow, depending on where you are in the world. All right. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you all next week.